Sir Joseph Wilson Swan, DSC, H, C, FRS was a British physicist and chemist. He is most famous for inventing the first incandescent light bulb. Swan first demonstrated the light bulb at a lecture in Newcastle upon Tyne on 18 December 1878, but he did not receive a patent until 27 November 1880 after improvement to the original lamp. His house was the first in the world to be lit by light bulb, and the world's first electric light illumination in a public building was for a lecture Swan gave in 1880. In 1881, the Savoy Theatre in the city of Westminster, London, was lit by Swan incandescent light bulbs. The first theatre and the first public building in the world to be lit entirely by electricity. In 1904 Swan was knighted by King Edward VII, awarded the Royal Society's Hughes Medal, and was made an honorary member of the Pharmaceutical Society. He had already received the highest decoration in France, the Legend d'Honneur, when he visited an international exhibition in Paris in 1881. The exhibition included exhibits of his inventions, and the city was lit with electric light, thanks to Swan's invention. Early Life Joseph Wilson Swan was born in 1828 at Pallion Hall in Pallion in the parish of Bishop Wemoth, near Sunderland. His parents were John Swan and Isabella Cameron. He was said to have had an inquiring mind even as a child. He augmented his education with a fascination of his surroundings, the industry of the area and reading. He attended lectures at the Sunderland Athenaeum. He later became a partner in Mawson's, a firm of manufacturing chemists in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, started by John Mawson the husband of his sister, Elizabeth Swan. This company existed as Mawson, Swan and Morgan until 1973, formerly located on Grey Street in Newcastle-upon-Tyne near Grey's Monument. The premises are now owned by the Swedish fashion retailer H&M and can be identified by a line of Victorian-style electric street lamps in front of the store on Grey Street. Swan lived at Underhill, a large house on Kells Lane North, Low Fell, Gateshead, where he conducted most of his experiments in the large conservatory. The house was later converted into a private fee-paying, grant-aided co-educational grammar school named Beaconsfield School. Here, students could still find examples of Swan's original electrical fittings. Electric Light In 1850 Swan began working on a light bulb using carbonized paper filaments in an evacuated glass bulb. By 1860 he was able to demonstrate a working device and obtained a British patent covering a partial vacuum, carbon filament incandescent lamp. However, the lack of a good vacuum and an adequate electric source resulted in an inefficient light bulb with a short lifetime. In 1875 Swan returned to consider the problem of the light bulb with the aid of a better vacuum and a carbonized thread as a filament. The most significant feature of Swan's improved lamp was that there was little residual oxygen in the vacuum tube to ignite the filament, thus allowing the filament to glow almost white hot without catching fire. However, his filament had low resistance, thus needing heavy copper wires to supply it. Swan first publicly demonstrated his incandescent carbon lamp at a lecture for the Newcastle-upon-Tyne Chemical Society on 18 December 1878. However after burning with a bright light for some minutes in his laboratory, the lamp broke down due to excessive current. On 17 January 1879 this lecture was successfully repeated with the lamp shown in actual operation. Swan had solved the problem of incandescent electric lighting by means of a vacuum lamp. On 3 February 1879 he publicly demonstrated a working lamp to an audience of over 700 people in the lecture theatre of the Literary and Philosophical Society of Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Sir William Armstrong presiding. Swan turned his attention to producing a better carbon filament and the means of attaching its ends. He devised a method of treating cotton to produce parchmentized thread and obtained British patent 4933 on 27 November 1880. 
From that time he began installing light bulbs in homes and landmarks in England. His house, Underhill on Kells Lane in Low Fell, Gateshead, was the world's first to have working light bulbs installed. The Lyttonville Library in Westgate Road, Newcastle, was the first public room lit by electric light during a lecture by Swan on 20 October 1880. In 1881 he founded his own company, the Swan Electric Light Company, and started commercial production. The Savoy, a state-of-the-art theatre in the city of Westminster, London, was the first public building in the world lit entirely by electricity. Swan supplied about 1,200 incandescent lamps, powered by an 88.3 kilowatts generator on open land near the theatre. The builder of the Savoy, Richard Doyle Cart, explained why he had introduced Swan's electric light. The greatest drawbacks to the enjoyment of the theatrical performances are, undoubtedly, the foul air and heat which pervade all theatres. As everyone knows, each gas burner consumes as much oxygen as many people, and causes great heat beside. The incandescent lamps consume no oxygen, and cause no perceptible heat. The first generator proved too small to power the whole building, and though the entire front of house was electrically lit, the stage was lit by gas until 28 December 1881. At that performance, Cart stepped on stage and broke a glowing light bulb before the audience to demonstrate the safety of Swan's new technology. On 29 December 1881, the Times described the electric lighting as superior, visually, to gaslight. The first private residence, other than the inventors, lit by the new incandescent lamp was that of his friend, Sir William Armstrong at Cragside, near Rothbury, Northumberland. Swan personally supervised the installation there in December 1880. Swan had formed the Swan Electric Light Company Limited with a factory at Benwell, Newcastle, and had established the first commercial manufacture of incandescent light bulbs by the beginning of 1881. The first ship to use Swan's invention was the City of Richmond, owned by the Inman Line. She was fitted out with incandescent lamps in June 1881. The Royal Navy also introduced them to their ships soon after with HMS Inflexible having the new lamps installed in the same year. Swan was one of the early developers of the electric safety lamp for miners. Exhibiting his first in Newcastle-upon-Tyne at the North of England Institute of Mining Engineers on 14 May 1881, this required a wired supply so the following year he presented one with a battery and other improved versions followed. By 1886 a lamp with better light output than a flame safety lamp was in production by the Edison Swan Company. However, it suffered from problems of reliability and was not a success. It took development by others over the next 20 years or so before effective electric lamps were in common use. Independent from Edison, the common coupling of Swan's name with that of Thomas Edison in connection with the incandescent electric lamp has often led to the notion that Swan collaborated with Edison in this invention. That was not so. Their work was completely independent, and although each knew the other was working on the problem of devising a practical lamp, they had neither met nor communicated with each other. The conjunction of their names came about in 1883 when the two competing companies merged to exploit both Swan's and Edison's inventions. In America, Edison had been working on copies of the original light bulb patented by Swan, trying to make them more efficient. Though Swan had beaten him to this goal, Edison obtained patents in America for a fairly direct copy of the Swan light, and started an advertising campaign that claimed that he was the real inventor. Swan, who was less interested in making money from the invention, agreed that Edison could sell the lights in America while he retained the rights in the United Kingdom. While searching for a better filament for his light bulb, Swan inadvertently made another advance. In 1881 he developed and patented a process for squeezing nitrocellulose through holes to form conducting fibers. His newly established company used Swan's cellulose filaments in the bulbs. The textile industry has also used this process. 
Ediswan. In 1883 the Edison and Swan United Electric Light Company was established. Known commonly as Ediswan, the company sold lamps made with a cellulose filament that Swan had invented in 1881. Variations of the cellulose filament became an industry standard, except with the Edison Company. Edison continued using bamboo filaments until the 1892 merger that created Edison General Electric, and that company then shifted to cellulose. In 1886 Ediswan moved production to a former jute mill at Ponder's End, North London. In 1916 Ediswan set up the UK's first radiothermionic valve factory at Ponder's End. This area, with nearby Brimsdown subsequently developed as a centre for the manufacture of thermionic valves, cathode ray tubes, etc., and nearby parts of Enfield became an important centre of the electronics industry for much of the 20th century. Ediswan became part of British Thomson Houston and Associated Electrical Industries in the late 1920s. Photography when working with wet photographic plates, Swan noticed that heat increased the sensitivity of the silver bromide emulsion. By 1871 he had devised a method of using dry plates and substituting nitrocellulose plastic for glass plates, thus initiating the age of convenience in photography. Eight years later he patented bromide paper, developments of which are still used for black and white photographic prints. In 1864, Swan patented the transfer process for making carbon prints, a permanent photographic process. By adding the transfer step, Swan was able to easily make photographs with a full tonal range. Later life, in 1894 Swan was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society, and in September 1901 he was awarded the honorary degree of Doctor of Science from the University of Durham. In 1904 he was knighted, awarded the Royal Society's Hughes Medal, and made an honorary member of the Pharmaceutical Society. Swan died in 1914 at Wallingham in Surrey. In 1945 the London Power Company commemorated Swan by naming a new 1554 GRT Coastal Collier SS Sir Joseph Swan.